here we are again for another Monday Music with Milani. And as you can hear behind me, there are some birds. And you know what you don't hear? We don't hear cicadas. I only hear birds. The cicada time in Pennsylvania is starting to be over. You may hear them in some places, but not here tonight. You know what you are going to hear? A bunch of music. Oh, let's start. on the beat almost the whole way through. Did you hear that? Well, this week for Music Monday with Milani, we'll be talking about Europe. Europe is the topic for the week for Monday Music with Milani, Tuesday Cooking, Wednesday Walks, Thursday STEM, and Friday Art. I hope you've been coming back every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to learn some of these really nice things that are all from different subjects. So, what I did for Europe is I did a little research, which is what I usually do, and I realized that there are lots of countries in Europe with many languages that I do not know how to sing. So I needed to find some things that could be universal. And I thought, well, what is it that most people know about Europe? Well, I can tell you for the English-speaking world, most people know nursery rhymes nursery rhymes, and also fairy tales for many of us come from Europe. Although they, there are fairy tales in every country, they are all wonderful, but since we're talking about Europe today, that's what we're going to focus on. So I looked up something that we all know, it's called Are You Sleeping? Are You Sleeping? Are You Sleeping? Brother John, you know it, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, and then some people say ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Other people use different words. We're going to go with the ding, ding, dong, okay? <laughs> so, in English, that's exactly what the nursery rhyme is, but in some other countries, they have some different words and some different meanings with the same idea. You will find this all the time in music. So, are you sleeping? Mm -hmm. It would go like this. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John. Morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Did you see that only used one chord? You know what I could do with this? I could do a different chord and sing the exact same song just starting on a different note. Mm, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Did you know you could do that? Well, now you do. So that was the English version. Now. In Hong Kong, in the language called Cantonese, they use some different words and a different meaning to the song. Instead of saying someone is asleep, morning bells are ringing, they say, open the mosquito net. I know, what's that about? So this is, this is the Hong Kong version of Are You Sleeping? Open the mosquito net, open the mosquito net. There's a mosquito, there's a mosquito. Quickly bring a hand fan, quickly bring a hand fan. Fan it away, fan it away. So clearly in Hong Kong, for children, it's a good idea to have a mosquito net. They must have a lot of mosquitoes in Hong Kong. And here's another one. In Armenian, now these aren't all Europe, but in Armenian, to the tune of Freire Jaka, they do Brother Jacob, Brother Jacob, wake up, wake up, 
Go ring the bell, go ring the bell, ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong. Well, that was very similar to the one that we know. Okay. And do you know what else? Most people learn, even if you are a native English speaker, most people learn that song in French. Do you know it in French? You might know that you might know it and not even know you're singing in French. It goes like this. Frère Jacques, uh, do you rec recognize that? Frère Jacques, uh, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sun in the matina, sun in the matina. Ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Do you know that different languages and cultures use the same ideas? Well, it's so interesting. So I'm going to put that one away. Um, and what we're going to do now is part of a fairy tale song. There are many fairy tales that you can find in many different cultures. One good example, and I recommend that you go to your public library, is Cinderella. There is a Cinderella story for pretty much every culture. I, this is your homework. Go to the library the next time you go to the library and say, can you show me where the fairy tales are? And then look around in the fairy tale section and see how many of them say a fairy tale from, and then they'll say a country a fairy tale from, and then they'll say a country, and then some of them will say a Cinderella story from, and then they will give the country. It's very interesting. So, the one we're going to do right now is not Cinderella though, because I don't know a Cinderella song. This is a Goldilocks song. So let's talk about Goldilocks. Goldilocks goes into the woods. She's not supposed to stray. No, that's not the fairy tale, but she, most fairy tales do start with someone straying where they shouldn't and then having adventures because how are you going to have an adventure unless you do something you shouldn't? That's kind of what happens with a lot of stories. So Goldilocks goes to the house of the three bears. In the house of the three bears, are the bears home? No, they're not home. So she goes in and she decides she's going to look around and she's not very polite so she decides to help herself to some of the things in the bear's house. So the first thing she does is she goes into the kitchen and she sees three bowls. A huge bowl, a really big bowl, a smaller bowl, and then a wee little bowl. And they all have porridge in them and she's hungry. So you know what she does? She tries all the porridge in the bowls. Is this familiar to everybody? It had better be. Okay, good. If not, go to your library. So after the bowls, she decides she's going to go sit down. So she goes into the living room and there she finds three chairs. One that is a great big chair, one that's a medium sized chair, and one that is a wee little chair. So she sits on all the three chairs. Do you remember what happens? One of them breaks. She's not very careful, you should be careful. Then she's tired so she decides that she wants to take a nap. So she goes into the bedroom and there she finds Yes, someone just said it, three beds. A great big bed, a medium sized bed, and a what kind of bed? Wee little bed, that's right. So she lies down in each bed, one is too hard, one is too soft, and one is just right. So she lies down in the last bed and she falls fast asleep. Do you remember, is there a happy ending to this song? Yes, there is. Don't worry. So, listen to this song, and you'll hear the story, and I want you to help me, because there's a part that goes like this. A bowl, or a bed, or a chair, that was huge. We're just going to use the word thing. A thing that was small, a thing that was tiny, and that was all. I want you to help when we do that part, okay? So we'll practice it. Let's just say the word thing because whatever it is changes each time. A thing that was huge, a thing that was small, good. A thing that was tiny, and that was all, and that happens every time we switch to the next thing. Okay, we're ready. Listen first, you'll know when to come in. When Goldilocks went to the house of the bears, oh, what did her two eyes see? We see a bowl first. 
A bowl that was huge, a bowl that was small, a bowl that was tiny, and that was all. She counted them one, two, three. Guess what? There are always three things. Okay, so the first thing was the bowl, the next thing is the chair. So we're gonna do the same thing, just substitute the word chair. When Goldilocks went to the house of the bears, oh, what did her two eyes see? Here's the chairs. A chair that was huge, a chair that was small, a chair that was tiny, and that was all. She counted them one, two, three, Okay, so we've done two of the three things. We did the bowl, we did the chair. What does she do for the third one? The bed, that's right, here we go. When Goldilocks went to the house of the bears, oh, what did her two eyes see? A bed that was huge, a bed that was small, a bed that was tiny, and that was all. She counted them one, two, three. Okay, well, we know that's not the end. How does she get, how does she wake up? Okay, listen, you'll find out. When Goldilocks ran from the house of the bears, oh, what did her two eyes see? A bear that was huge, a bear that was small, a bear that was tiny, and that was all. They growled at her one, two, three. Give me a growl. Well, that was satisfying. And it was a happy ending for Goldilocks or for the bears. You decide. I'll see you for the next song. <laughs> now, if you look behind me, you will see that the leaves are nice and green. You might see that some of these leaves are brown and dry on the ends. Uh, if you look, if you're in Pennsylvania and you look outside in your backyard, or in the park or places where you go where there are many trees, you may see that although we're only in the beginning of July, some of these trees are starting to get brown parts on the ends of their branches. And that actually has to do with the cicadas. Now that the cicadas have gone through their life cycle, they're going through their life cycle, the last thing they do is they go to the tips of some branches of trees, they make little cuts, in the ends, it doesn't really hurt the tree if there aren't too many cicadas, and they lay their eggs, which is really neat. That's kind of how the cicadas make their nests. And when the eggs hatch, the little grub comes out and they fall. They fall to the ground and they continue what the big cicadas do. They eventually burrow down into the ground and they hibernate for many years, and then we see them again many years from now. It's a really special thing that you get to see and hear and experience cicadas. So if you're somewhere where there are still cicadas out buzzing and running around, flying around, uh, please go and look at them because they are a very, very important, well, very interesting thing to learn about and they're not here all the time. So talking about rain, rain also helps the trees to be healthy, helps the grass to be healthy, helps the flowers grow, helps you and I to be healthy because we need moisture all the time. And so we have a song that's like London Bridge and we put some different words to it and it has raindrops in the song and I need your help to do the song. So this is what we'll do first. We start with little raindrops. Can you show little raindrops with your hands? Maybe you could pat on your legs, just little pats, because they're little raindrops. You could even do this, pat, pat, pat. Doesn't that kind of even look like raindrops? Well, then we go from little raindrops to bigger raindrops. Well, if these are little raindrops, what would bigger raindrops be? They could be this. Or if you're doing your knees, pat on your knees. That would work too. So we have little raindrops, bigger raindrops, and then I can't, well, I can. Um, except it would, it would be difficult for you to see. Giant raindrops. How do you show giant raindrops? 
Yes, that would work. Okay, stomp your feet. And that could be giant raindrops falling down. Okay. So let's start with little raindrops, okay? Little raindrops falling down, falling down, falling down. Little raindrops falling down, falling to the ground. That was good. Can you do it again? Okay, do it. Little raindrops falling down, falling down, falling down. Little raindrops falling down, falling to the ground. What was next? Bigger. How will you show that? Show me. Oh my! Okay, some people are clapping, some people are patting. You can pat your tummy, you can pat your shoulders, you can pat your head as if the big raindrops, bigger raindrops were splatting upon your head. Okay, so this is bigger raindrops. Here we go. Bigger raindrops falling down, falling down, falling down. Bigger raindrops falling down, falling to the ground. So we did little, bigger, this kind of reminds me of the Goldilocks song a little bit. Except now we have giant. We went from little to big. We did the opposite of the Goldilocks song. Hmm. So now we're, are you ready for giant raindrops? Oh, you're so ready. You're jumping up and down. Here we go. Giant raindrops falling down, falling down, falling down. Giant raindrops falling down, falling to the ground. Do that again. with the last raindrops but that was fun did you notice that Goldilocks went from huge small tiny but this song the raindrop song went from little bigger giant and we didn't even use the same words to s explain those ideas but we all knew what it meant that was cool okay see you for the next song so when we're talking about songs a lot of times the songs that we learn start out as nursery rhymes because don't most songs rhyme? In fact, we love to have fun with rhymes. And that's the reason why a lot of people write songs because things rhyme and you hear them all the time and you want the bells to chime and we all have a real good time. Really good time, I should say. You can hear rhymes everywhere. And the way that we start to learn about our language is by learning nursery rhymes. Nursery just means when you're a little kid and you start to grow up. But guess what? Grown-ups like them too. If you listen to a lot of grown-up songs, I am not dissing the grown-up songs, but a lot of grown-up songs enjoy rhymes. It's not a bad thing to enjoy the rhymes. So I'm going to show you a silly one that I found out while I was researching. This one was from England, and this is called a lap sit rhyme this is a rhyming game you play with a baby hmm i don't have a baby with me so guess what i'm going to use my baritone ukulele in the part of the baby so what you do is you the grown-up or you the big sister or big brother or uncle or aunt or grown-up who loves your tiny baby you get safely with your baby and the baby's in your lap and you're holding them gently and the oh the baby should be facing you i forgot let me turn the ukulele around there you are little ukulele baby and this song slash rhyme is called from wibbleton to wobbleton so wibble wobble and then put the word tin on the back wibbleton to wobbleton and this is a nonsense rhyme that doesn't really mean anything it is just for fun all right, we're not gonna put the baby's head in front of my face in the video, but what you do in the rhyme is you juggle the baby gently and comfortably. Use a doll for this. Don't actually use a baby. So you start on both your knees and you jiggle the baby like this. Oh, does the baby like it? Yes, yes they do. You go from Wibbleton to Wobbleton is 15 miles. So good, and notice I'm being so gentle. From Wobbleton to Wibbleton is 15 miles. Did you see I switched it? From Wobbleton to Wibbleton is 15 miles I did for the second one. And then you do just one leg 
to do this from Wibbleton to Wobbleton and then you go the same pattern but then back from Wobbleton to Wibbleton is the baby liking it yes they are and then you go back to both legs and you go from Wibbleton to Wobbleton is 15 miles oh and then you tickle and that's so fun too so I'm gonna do it without stopping grab your look your nearest baby shaped object which can be a toy you could just pretend you have a baby it's all good and we'll do this for fun from Wibbleton to Wobbleton is 15 miles from Wobbleton to Wibbleton is 15 miles from Wibbleton to Wobbleton from Wobbleton to Wibbleton from Wibbleton to Wobbleton is 15 miles oh so good that was so funny and weird do you think you could make up something like that? I'm sure you could. See you in a minute. Well, today is a day for a lot of short little funny songs that you may or may not know. I'm sure you did not know the last one. I didn't. So now we have two short little songs. One of them is from England and it says, go in and out the window. So go in and out the window go in and out the window go in and out the window as we have done before I don't know what that's supposed to mean but it's very fun to sing oh, I'll do a little it goes like this go in and out the window go in and out the window go in and out the window as we have done before. Oh, that feels, that feels so good. Okay, what can we do with this? Can we rock? Let's try this. Go in and out the window. Go in and out the window. Go in and out the window. As we have done before. Oh, I want to. I want to put some more words to that. Is that allowed? Yes, of course it is. Ah, uh, let's see. What rhymes with window? I don't know. We could just leave it window, couldn't we? Yes. We could, instead of we have done before, what does four rhyme with? Door! Very good, whoever just said that. Okay. So, it's a very simple pattern. Let's just keep going in and out the window part the same. And let's say something about the door. Let's say... Make sure you shut the door. Does that match? I think it does. Okay. Go in and out the window. Go in and out the window. Go in and out the window. Make sure you shut the door. Because windows and doors, you know, they kind of make sense. And it rhymes. All right. What else, what else rhymes with door? Or before? More. I heard someone say that. Okay. All right. Uh, something that ends with the word more and let's go okay people have some ideas and let's and let's go sing some more oh you're so smart that totally fits go in and out the window go in and out the window go in and out the window and then let's sing some more that totally makes sense so that was a short one, and you can make up some cool things to go along with it. And then the other one, you may already know the other one. In fact, it's in movies sometimes. We could do it with the same chords. And I'll sing it for you. This one is also from England, which is in Europe, which is our theme of the week. Oh, do you know the mo Do It should be starting here. Oh, do you know? I'm still going in and out the window. Give me a moment to change over in my brain. Do you, I got it. Do you know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man? Oh, do you know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane? Drury Lane is a famous road and it's in England, okay. And then you have to say, you do know the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Oh, yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane. Sometimes they say lives in Drury Lane. 
to say they live in the street. Those are both correct. Okay, so let's do that whole thing together. Do you know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane? Then you say, yes, I know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man. Yes, I know the Muffin Man who lives on Drury Lane. Two interesting ones. Oh, thanks for doing that with me. See you in a minute. Well, you know, I was thinking that we would be hearing just a little bit of cicada activity behind us, but I think in this particular area, the cicadas are done. Some places that you go may have no cicadas singing at all. Other places that you go, there might be a whole bunch. They seem to have a pattern to them, as we were just talking about patterns in music. So we're already at the end of today's visit. Doesn't it go by so fast? I know it really does. So today's topic, which was Europe, because I really only know English as my first language, I couldn't give you a really good idea of all the wonderful things that there are in Europe. This is really true of most of the places that we have had as a topic. But there's something that is from Austria, Poland, and Germany. It is written by a famous composer named Johann Strauss II. He was known as the Waltz King. We should have talked about him when I was doing the waltzes during one of our earlier visits. But I didn't find out about him at that time. So guess what? We're going to talk about him now. He wrote the Blue Danube Waltz. Da, 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 da. You've heard that. That's a very famous song. He wrote that. He also wrote this song, which is called The Emperor Waltz. The Emperor Waltz was given as a token, a toast of friendship. It was first played in 1889. But it's a beautiful, beautiful song that people often use in movies. You may have even heard it on a late night Saturday night television show. And, uh, there's an interesting story about Johann Strauss II. He was so famous. I'll tell you at the end of the song. to it and they called it love is a dream oh such a beautiful song oh wait I was going to tell you the funny story this is the story of how long ago when people were famous conductors and everyone was in a rage of interest at them when they wrote songs that people love to dance to that it was the custom for people to ask for a souvenir and often the souvenir 
was a lock of the famous person's hair. And a lock of hair just means a little snip of hair. You would cut some off, put it in an envelope maybe, and mail it to someone back in the days when people mailed things. By the way, it's good to continue to mail things. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and what happened was Johann Strauss II had dark hair. And he had a Newfoundland dog who also had dark hair. So many people wrote to him and said, please, please, may I have a lock of your hair to remember you by because I am so impressed with you. He cut little pieces of hair off of his dog and he put them in envelopes and mailed them to people. And they thought that they had his real hair. That was in the days before DNA and I don't think that uh, there still could be a lot of people who have family heirlooms that say, this is a lock of Johann Strauss II's hair. Well, maybe not, people. All right. We've had another wonderful time with Monday Music with Milani, part of WPSU's virtual summer camps. Don't forget, you need to tune in every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for Monday Music, Tuesday Cooking, Wednesday Walks, Thursday STEM and Friday art. I'm gonna sing you out. Bye bye. La la la. la.